and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Nish Kumar, Tiff Stevenson and Ed Byrne, Rhys James, Hugh Dennis and Tom Allen. We start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? I can tell you exactly what that is. That is the bloke who runs America talking to President Trump. <laughs> <laughs> it's Trump saying, no, I said you gave me an election. <laughs> <laughs> it's Trump saying, I genuinely thought you and the meerkat were the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine the conversation is going very well because uh, Vladimir Putin doesn't speak very good English and Donald Trump also doesn't speak very good English. <laughs> it looks like a before and after for one of those hair restoring clinics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying this is what they used when I had my prostate exam. <laughs> is he saying, uh, so which journalist do you want me to have killed? <laughs> Is it a picture of... <laughs> too, too, like, clearly went serious. <laughs> you too too far yeah. with that one, oh, all right, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realise this was a pro-Putin audience. <laughs> <laughs> the shocking anti-Putin bias at the BBC! <laughs> <laughs> this is political correctness gone mad! <laughs> this is political correctness gone mad. <laughs> For a second, I considered going for the accent, and I pulled out of it. And when I heard you do it, I was like, good decision, Cooper. <laughs> you think? Oh, I think we can do I think you can do the Russian accent. Do yeah. you really think so? Oh, no, I can't. can't. <laughs> <laughs> is it Trump saying, I can with Viagra, but all that comes out is a weird-smelling dust? <laughs> <laughs> He's probably just going, look into my eyes. I did not hack American elections. <laughs> That's, that's Sesame Street. Who yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was one Tom and did election? This guy! Uh... This is the uh, first annual meeting of the We Are Definitely Not Bald Club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a tedious meeting that would be. <laughs> OK, do you want me to tell you what it actually is? It's Vladimir Putin meeting Donald Trump at the G20. Thank you very much, Nish Kumar. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <Thank you very much. laughs> yes, this is a picture of US President Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin meeting at this week's G20 summit in Hamburg. How did it all go? Well, did you enjoy the G20 this year? This particular meeting, there, first, for a first date, this one seemed to go very, very well, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> Trump came out immediately afterwards and was like... He did? Oh, he did? Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, it was Pride Weekend. Uh... Why not? It's the G20. <laughs> you know, it had that effect on people. what the G stands for? Gay 20, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the 20 biggest gays. <laughs> wow. the That's biggest gays in the world. <laughs> <Biggest gays. laughs> Sorry, Tom, but please tell me from within, how does one measure the biggest gays? <laughs> 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 Do they host that at Camp David? <laughs> 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 he, but Trump, came, Trump immediately emerged after the conversation uh, and said, oh, I talked to Putin about the hacking and he didn't do it. And you go, that's not how anything works. <laughs> It'd be like my six-year-old saying, I asked my daddy if he let me win that running race, and he said he didn't. <laughs> he said he was running as best he could, and I won the running race because I am fastest. <laughs> <laughs> that cleared up. I, yeah. was, I was fastest. <laughs> <laughs> you, you love the age difference, don't you? You just... You just <laughs> Gotta yeah. have an angle somewhere, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It's very, very difficult, though, for Donald Trump to admit that the Russians interfered in the American election, cos the only reason the Russians would have done it is they know that by getting him elected, they would turn America into a laughing stock and a disaster, which is why the Russians didn't interfere in our election, cos they know that we can do that all on our own. <laughs> <laughs> He said that he'd questioned him twice, I think he said, the question whether they'd interfered yeah. in the election. And Putin said, we do not interfere in this election, we will not interfere in the next election. Which you will win. <laughs> <laughs> you just imagine that what Donald Trump actually did say to him. Did you hack our election? Were you involved in meddling in our election? You could just imagine Putin just looking at him going, 
how thick are you? <laughs> we had this conversation. What's <laughs> us to do it? <laughs> It's coming out and they're now saying that, you know, this is the first time that there's something concrete that might lead to Trump's impeachment. But what I love about it is the innocence of people thinking if he gets impeached, he's going to leave. Like, <laughs> this doesn't end with him walking out. This ends with him on the roof, holding Melania like King Kong, <laughs> and a bunch of planes speeding towards the White House, just thinking, well, this was always going to go down this way. <laughs> The meeting was apparently two hours and 16 minutes long. And everyone finds that ridiculous. What were they up to? And I don't want to make assumptions, but two hours, 16 minutes is the exact running time of Shrek 3. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that... I think, in fairness, we know which one's Shrek and which one's Donkey. <laughs> Melania had to break it up. Yeah. They literally had to send Melania in. Poor Melania, like, she is literally waiting just for him. Like, he's 71, he's on a bad diet, isn't he? He's worth a lot of money. Yeah. She's just gonna grease the stairs and shout fire. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. You know, you can see her every time she makes a public appearance. She's like, hello, I'm Melania, I speak five languages. I know how to say help me and all of that. <laughs> Where did Trump get to fill in for him at some of the G20 meetings? It was, it was bring your daughter to work day at the G20, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Ivanka sat in on some of the meetings. But I think it's all a bit unfair because, you know, what Trump did is no different to what Obama did. He was also replaced by Ivanka. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were talking about global warming and then she just went, I've got a really nice range of sandals. <laughs> I can help you with that. <laughs> That's how she talks, but That's how everyone American talks. <laughs> like yeah. they're running out of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> How did Theresa May get on the G20? She got on very, very well. Did she? <laughs> <laughs> you why she got on well? It's because, for, at the moment, she's under a lot of pressure. So, Philip Hammond, for example, has said that the economy should be at the centre of Brexit, should be a soft Brexit. But Donald Trump has promised her a very quick trade deal with the United States. And it will be quick, because the negotiation will be very quick. They will say, will you accept irradiated beef, you know, vegetables full of hormones? And we will say, hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Any croissants? <laughs> uh, I remember croissants. My yeah. children have never eaten croissants. Yeah. I described them to them once. There's pastry yeah. everywhere. It was yeah. out. I, I want some cheese. <laughs> I want some cheese. <laughs> Not cheddar. Uh. I always feel as well like Theresa May and Donald Trump have a slightly. She seems like a sort of school mom. She seems like a nanny to him, which I imagine he'd respond well to. Like, no, Don no, Donald, no. We are not going to misbehave. We're not going to have a travel ban, are we? If you misbehave, I don't care. I will pull your pants down and I'll smack your bottom in front of all these world leaders. <laughs> What's going to happen is I'm going to make some scones, I'm going to give you some sugar paper and some crayons, and you're going to draw us a very nice trade deal. Yes. <laughs> and if you don't behave yourself, you can go to Mrs Merkel's office. You won't like that. <laughs> I can imagine if Theresa May and Donald Trump ever have dinner together, Theresa May cuts his meat up for yeah. him. <laughs> Trump has said he's going to come to the UK. Yes. Right, he counselled it before, and now he said he's going to come, but now he's just not telling us when he's going to come, so we can't protest. It's like when you get told, like, the Sky Man's coming round, so you've got to wait in between eight and six. Yeah. <laughs> but that means you can't have a wank, because you don't know when he's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Who has Theresa May called on for help this week? The Labour Party. Yes. She said, can they help her deliver Brexit? That is definitely a trap. <clears throat> that is what, that's her going, come over here, Labour, and help me with Brexit. I won't blame it on you. Her asking Labour is just more evidence that Jeremy Corbyn did win the election, right? Now he gets to have a say, right? He gets his own chant, and thanks to that messed up high five, he got to touch a boob. <laughs> <laughs> It's all win for me, he yeah. says. Yeah, sure, he's <laughs> messed yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. I'd to be in that meeting where she says to him, like, so, Jeremy, Jeremy, have you got any ideas? And he goes, oh, yes, reaching into his hemp briefcase, going, oh, yes, I have got an idea. <laughs> it's, uh, it's there. <laughs> Okay, at the end of that round, the boys are going to time you and Reese. Oh. Now 
Now we play a round called I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Vladimir. <laughs> This game involves Tom and Nish. So, if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is... politics. Oh, Nish. So, we're living through a real period of political instability, both here and in America. And in the last couple of months, some unlikely saviours have emerged. Tony Blair is considering a return to frontline politics, and Chelsea Clinton is contemplating a run for the Senate in 2020. And to those people, let me just say this. Maybe just leave it. <laughs> If you want to turn your public opinion around, the way to do it is philanthropy, right? And let's look at someone who has turned their public opinion around through philanthropy. Look at Bill Gates, right? Bill Gates, for the last 15 years, with his wife Melinda, has spent all his time trying to fight the spread of infectious disease. I don't understand the science behind what's going on. From what I can tell, Bill Gates is trying to bribe AIDS to fuck off, right? <laughs> And we like him for that. But in the 90s, we hated Bill Gates because of the paperclip. Basically, <laughs> there was a paperclip, and you'd turn on Word, and the paperclip would appear, and it would ask you if you're writing a letter, but you weren't writing a letter. So you're like, I hate you, Bill Gates! I'm going to buy a Mac forever! <laughs> and there are people genuinely putting their money where their mouth is in regards to philanthropy. Look at J.K. Rowling. We all need to be very nice to J.K. Rowling from now on, because she may be about to be all we've got economically. We have no <laughs> manufacturing sector. Our service industry has been driven by mass migration from the EU. After Brexit, our entire economy may depend on the adventures of a fake wizard that technically ended in 2007, right? <laughs> we got the play, we got the films, we got the film tour. Can we do a play tour? JK, please write another book! Wales is sinking! <laughs> Maybe something about Harry trying to get his finances in order in his 30s, like Harry Potter and the mystery of the fixed rate ISA. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nish. <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Tom. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. Now, uh, the topic is family. Oh, OK, fine. <laughs> I did that run very well, didn't I? <laughs> um, so, affording your own home is very difficult in today's climate. And recently, I've been forced to live with a couple. Uh, they're called Dad and Mum. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that my parents' friends all like to let me know is that they are down with the perfs. <laughs> <laughs> they are down with the perfs, they love the perfs, and I'm, I'm, I'm gay, I'm gay. I, I don't know if I needed to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> but I say I'm gay, I hardly find the time. But... <laughs> I mean, I'm a Gemini as well, but they don't get a parade. But the thing is, like, their friend, Les, uh, wanted to come over and talk to me. Les comes over and he says, Oh, Tom, I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you, right, my brother, right, my brother, he is gay now. <laughs> gay now? I mean, it sounded like he'd done an evening class and become a Pilates instructor. <laughs> So he is, oh yeah, my brother, he's gay now. He's ever so worried about Telebi, ever so worried about Telebi. He said, oh, I've got to tell you, Les, I'm gay, Les, I'm gay, Les. I thought, gay, Les, that's complicated, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you could be both. So I'm gay, Les, I'm gay, Les. And I just said to him, Tom, I just said to him, oh, don't worry, bruv, there's one on every bus. <laughs> Which I thought was a very confusing thing to say, because as far as I'm concerned, all the gays I know use Uber. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. Well done. Give that round for to Tom Allen. Yeah. Our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Tom, which category would you like? Uh, world News, please. Well, yourself, your category is World News, and the answer is 580 miles. What is the question? Is it how far the proclaimers now have to walk? <laughs> to see their partner now they've been priced out of Aberdeen. <laughs> Is it, according to my estate agent, how far can I throw a stone? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, how far wide of the mark everything Piers Morgan says is? <laughs> Is it the closest Anne-Marie Morris has ever been to a person of colour? <laughs> What is the average distance Melania Trump has maintained from Donald since the great president? <laughs> is it what would count as an inconveniently long penis? <laughs> <laughs> is, 
convenient in what way, though. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Can one dragon fly on a stomach full of children? <laughs> that was way darker than I expected. Yeah. Is it the furthest Theresa May has ever travelled without performing a U-turn? <laughs> oh, I can do topical, guys. Don't think I'm just a silly old gay. <laughs> Is it, if you took out your intestine and laid it out flat, how far away would I move from your house? <laughs> 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 Is it if, if 580 miles were laid out end to end? <laughs> <laughs> How far away can Donald Trump Jr. get before they reach the end of the sentence, open up, it's the FBI? <laughs> I'll give you the correct answer. Is it how far a North Korean missile has travelled? Yes, this week. Thank you very much, Nishkumar. There you go. <laughs> Yes, the question I was looking for was how far did North Korea claim their latest missile travelled when they conducted a test launch last week? Experts from the US-based Union of Concerned Scientists suggest the missile could travel 6,700 kilometres far enough to reach Alaska. The so, Union of Concerned Scientists? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a party bunch, doesn't it? <laughs> I doubt there's very much chemistry there. Yes. <laughs> Well, yeah, they're next door to the Union of Blasé scientists. Who are kind of like, <laughs> Come on, it's Alaska. <laughs> what? I, I, Some salmon? Uh, <laughs> do you think if it reaches Alaska, though, because it, it's got the ice there already, uh, do you think maybe it'll form like a baked Alaska? <laughs> <laughs> Another big meringue over the top. If they could just flood it with jam, it would be delicious. <laughs> you, should, you should let them fire it at Alaska. It's going to save them a fortune on fracking. <laughs> 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 there is a lot of focus on Alaska, obviously because it is mainland yeah. America. The, and it's uh, rubbish, isn't it? Is that what you were going to say? Who cares? Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin. That's the there. point I was going to make about poor Alaska. <laughs> yeah. That it's no, Alaska, for God's sake. <laughs> oh, roar! I'm a bear. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> call me when it hits one of the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> you think we should be worried about it? Eh? I mean, is that you're the science guy? Obviously, oh, yeah. as you've discussed so many how, times. How dangerous is an ICBM? Is it 1950s technology? Is it like they have, in fact, perfected the it's Goblin quite, Tease How rate? dangerous is a nuclear weapon? Meh, quite dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> On a scale of stubbing your toe to lots of people dying, yeah. uh, it's more than the higher end of that rather than the lower. <laughs> how does it work, though? Why does it have to go so high? It went 4,700 kilometres up or something, didn't well, it? Well, it would get caught in the trees, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a test. You just pop it up and bring it down. Like the, uh, yeah, yeah. And equally, at, at Halloween, you could take the fireworks that you have in your garden yeah, and rather than send them straight up, you yeah. could just fire them straight at your neighbour. <laughs> right? You could just do that. You could just go, oh, this is for that big Lindy tree. <laughs> Straight in the window, right? This is for not giving me back my lawnmower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is the kind of discussions I'm sure you always have with your neighbours. Yeah. 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 Well, my neighbours are 580 miles away. <laughs> There he is. Look at him. Oh, Found the right way round. Yeah. Looking. The right way I think he's just checking that his uncle is still tied to the missile. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He's watching Love Island. <laughs> and he was delighted with himself. There he is. Oh. Thrilled. <laughs> that guy is like, love... oh, I live another day. Yeah. <laughs> that guy is absolutely hedging his bets on how the missile test goes because he's like, this is either I surrender or yeah. <laughs> Do you agree with me that pinstripe is very much the thing for watching it's a very, test? It's very slimming if you're sort of very carrying slimming. a bit of weight here. It can really bring, bring your waist in. Uh, and I think it's the de rigueur outfit for uh, launching a ballistic missile. <laughs> if you're planning, if you want to, what shall I wear? I'll ask a gay friend. Yeah. He says, pinstripe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, independent of whether or not he has any gay friends, and we'd imagine no, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Do you think the fact he's wearing pins means that somebody had the nerve to go to Kim Jong Un and go, maybe if one were to be carrying a little bit of weight? <laughs> uh, I'm not saying I'm not saying you are. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying it would be quite slimming in that situation. I, I'm not sure he's got that because uh, that same person presumably would have looked at his hair and been like, yeah, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, meanwhile, what, yeah. are the gov what are governments is cracking down and genuinely cracking down on this week? And people claiming ins insurance claims for getting food poisoning while on holiday. Yes. Because it's time for that to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Who was aware that we needed to draw a line in the sand on that one? <laughs> Who woke up this morning and went, too many people are claiming falsely that they got sick when they were on holiday. <laughs> and it's rife, this claiming back for, for illness on holiday. And the reaction is 50% of people going, that's terrible, because that surely goes back onto our insurance costs. Yeah. And 50% of people are going, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wasn't aware you could do that. Uh, that's because I had a bit of it. Remember, remember, Brenda, that dicky tummy round about day three, right? That'd be worth a few quid, wouldn't it? I once saw a list of complaints uh, to Thomas Cook, and my favourite one was from a woman in Surrey. He said, I want to complain about my holiday in Barbados. It took us eight hours to get home. <laughs> It only took the Americans three hours to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, if you get caught doing this, yeah. you can go to prison for three years. Imagine the conversation. Oh, what are you in for? I murdered my family. What about you? I pretended to have diarrhoea in Zante, so I didn't have to pay for a steak <laughs> freak. <laughs> Isn't all people doing it just for insurance, or is it just that classic British holiday maker thing of drinking 15 pints and then blaming <laughs> the yeah. fact that you're puking your ring on the prawn cocktail you had? You know? Wait, did, you, did you just say puking your ring? Puking your ring, yeah. yeah. Irish colloquialism. Yeah. I've never yeah. heard that puking your ring. Yeah. Yes. What does it mean? Is it something to do with like the Is it you puke the ring? so hard no. your own arsehole comes up and empty <laughs> <out of> your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> is the, is the idea. It's, it's a rich culture, the Irish uh, culture. Far too rich if you're puking like that. <laughs> we are a witty and loquacious people. You should, you should hear my father simply describe every fart he lets. He's a... <laughs> he's just... <laughs> you could knit that one. You know, that kind of... <laughs> 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 You won't get that out in a cold wash. <laughs> oh, it's like Ulysses, isn't it, really? <laughs> it was amazing when the, uh, when the Irish tourist board used that as a, uh, <laughs> one, of their, one of their things. Come it's, not, the it's not just the music <laughs> and the mountains people come for. <laughs> 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 it's big as there's, there's eating and drinking in that one. Uh, <laughs> that one came out with his boots on. <laughs> Where a fart isn't just a fart. <laughs> Ireland. Uh... Yeah, uh, a little pan. Uh, oh, you don't play pan pipes. I was about to say pan pipes. Pan pipes? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what do you think we are? <laughs> Mexican <to> our... Irish. <laughs> 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 <With> Peru. <laughs> You'll have come for the lakes of Killarney, <laughs> won't you? <laughs> I was about to say the penny whistle doesn't actually make any noise. No, the penny whistle is more of a Bolivian thing. Buenos dias. Happy and points Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panels can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is things a sport commentator would never say. Eight no balls in a row. You join us for the women's 100 metre final. <laughs> <laughs> Rory McElroy is on the green. He holds the baby lamb aloft. This is for an eagle. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's all over. It is now. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> and the Russian champ beginning her floor routine now. Mm. Running, running, running. Big jump and a tumble and a little tumble and then rolling around and then a bit of swirling. And I, to be honest with you, I normally do the darts. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Root's up now for England. He's quite cute, isn't he? He could spend a couple of hours at my crease. <laughs> and at the end of that match, it's nil-nil. But it doesn't matter, because both teams are just such lovely people. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are three horses in it. This is the worst sausage I've ever had. <laughs> Ferrari crosses the line in the worst case of cheating the London Marathon has ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Welcome to the Monaco Grand Prix. And yes, they do all sound a lot like bees. <laughs> 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 well, Gary and I are in the commentary position. If you want to know where that is, it's on page 32 between missionary and wheelbarrow. Mm. <laughs> Shock news as FIFA awards the 2022 World Cup to the Islamic State. <laughs> like about these cyclists but boy do they know their drugs <laughs> the referee there taking down Ronaldo's number not really the time or the place but good to see we've kicked homophobia out of football <laughs> <laughs> and as is traditional the leader of the Tour de France now awarded with the yellow jersey to remind him what color his piss is supposed to be <laughs> Fifteen thirty. <laughs> In a chat room, it's so difficult to tell. <laughs> Incredible delivery from Serena Williams. The baby came out in seven minutes and she didn't even <laughs> shit herself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is long, very long. I'll put it away now and get on with the comments. <laughs> okay. The next topic is. Unlikely lines from a thriller. Boss, I've got some news about the criminal who's been impersonating Sting. He's turned himself into the police. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to get out before it goes off. Oh, no, I've misread the sell-by date. We've got another week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my name is Pussy Galore. Yeah, obviously it's a code name. My real name? Oh, it's Fanny Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! You, in the Game of Thrones t-shirt, what did I just say about being cool? <laughs> <laughs> Strapped to a railway line. Thank God it's southern, I've got six hours to escape. <laughs> Whoever you are, I will find you and I will kill you. Now, can you tell me your postcode so I can pop it in the sat now? <laughs> Mr. Brown, meet Mr. White. I really should learn these diplomats' names. <laughs> you can beat me as much as you like, but I can't tell you where he is. <laughs> so it's all set up. No one knows where Wally is. <laughs> Go, leave me behind. I love you, that's why I'm saying this. Go ahead without me. You only get one chance to play the Crystal May. <laughs> oh, I'm so angry about all these people observing Ramadan. Nigel Farage stars in The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> it's a male, 30 to 35, Caucasian. No obvious sign of trauma. Oh, no, wait, the head should be attached to the body, shouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right, we was going down the match, going down to see the match with some of the lads, and some blokes got killed, didn't he? Yeah, it was murder on the Leighton Orient Express. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You're the Zodiac Killer. Before you do it, I'm a Libra. Just let me know what I've got coming up. <laughs> this elevator company is corrupt, and I think it goes all the way to the top. <laughs> You can kill me, but if you do, you will never find the sarin gas canister I have placed in the president's fridge. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> you try to expose corruption in my elevator company, you're going down. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that, the boys are going to end to finish! That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Mish Kumar, Tiff Stevenson, and Ed Byron. <laughs> Congratulations to Reese James, Hugh Dennis, and Tom Allen.
Thanks for watching. I'm Darrell Green. Good night.